Howdy ho, Mission Control. Thanks for joining in again. I'm going to pick up kind of where we left off. I needed to make three more of the uh, control boxes. Uh, this is the one we made last time. So if you remember, or if you're just joining us, I had to actually create some custom circuit boards. Here they are. Um, the first one I made is a lot messier than these. These came out a lot nicer. So I got all three of them made. Oops, I'll try to hold them up for you here. Hard to hold them. There we go. So these are uh, a ground bus and a uh, five volt bus for controlling relays so we don't have to do a bunch of wire splicing. So I got these all built and now I actually need to just start uh, mounting and drilling all the stuff into the project box okay. themselves. Well, it's been probably about three hours and I just got the last box all done. I ran out of red wire, so now it looks like Christmas in there. Uh, but everything went in real nice, and now I just need to write the software for it. I'm holding here the completed automation unit. I had some major problems uh, that took me quite a few days. That's why I got delayed in putting my videos up, is because um, I had the original, to those that aren't techie, this is going to be totally not fun, but don't worry, we'll get past it, um, an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Um, in general speak, it's a radio that talks to the internet. And I tried to install the radio into this box and make it talk to the computer, and the computer was very angry. Um, so. Uh, I ended up looking at quite a few different software libraries, and I'm trying to make a two days worth of long story very short here, forgive me, uh, but I, I looked for four software libraries to talk to this thing. A library is like a uh, translator, like a universal translator from Star Trek, if you will. It, it just makes talking a lot easier uh, to these different things. So uh, I went through four of them, and the module that I got is, the hardware is just too flaky. The Sorry, the hardware is actually pretty good. The software commands and the libraries that are available for it are just way too flaky. They're, they're not dependable. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You don't make any changes and all of a sudden other things are going wrong. So I tested it for two days and could not get it to function correctly. So what I ended up doing is, let's see here, get close enough so you can see this. I actually ended up, this is the Mega, that's the new board that we got. And we need it because it has all of these pins up here. And this is the old board that used to control the lanes. So I had quite a few of these. And what I learned, because uh, I didn't know this, is that I can connect this board to this board. Now, that's important because I wrote all the code for this already to talk to the internet and do everything that needs to be done, talk to the servers locally as well. And all I needed this thing for was to control these relays. These are switches. Relays is another word for a switch. So, oh my goodness. Ha. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, guys. I just realized this. Uh, I have a little screen off to the side of my camera here and allows me to know if you can actually see what I'm looking at. Uh, and to keep the light out of my eyes, I've been looking at it. But uh, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry if uh, I haven't been looking right at you. My apologies. I'll try to fix that. Again, I'm learning the light thing, right? It's been a while since we've had to do things at dark out here. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> it, totally distracted there. Okay, so we need this guy right here to just talk to these relays, to these switches, to turn on power to all these power ports right here so that uh, we actually can turn valves on and off. That's the game plan there. This is so what we have. We have a 12 volt power supply, so we're gonna have AC coming in, connecting to that. Then we have 12 volt going to the Mega, which also powers this, they're, they're slaved together, master-slave relationship. Then we have our five volt bus down here with our ground bus, and those all connect to the relays. And then 12 volt also comes down and provides 12 volt power to each of these power ports right here, which we then are gonna connect our, um, our uh, control valves to for the auto, for excuse me for the aquaponics to start with. So this whole box is going to be everything 12 volt and under. And then what I have to do the install. So we got to mount this tonight. This is going to be the 120 volt 
bus. Um, there's not going to be too many things. There's, for this lane, there's only going to be five relays. They'll fit in here. So we just have to run relay control and 120 volt power to these things. So what we're going to do, got our uh, wire clamps here. I put those in, run 120 in tonight, and then run 120 out. And then 120 out is going to go over into, uh, let's see if we can do it here. Hard to, hard to do this with just one person. Uh, so they're going to be like this. 120 is going to be here, 12 volt under is going to be here, and they're going to be connected right here. So I'll probably actually bring power in, power out, uh, and then in the future we'll connect all the 120 volts. So right now tonight the only thing we got to do here is mount this up. The only thing we need to do here tonight is mount this up, connect them with 120 power, and then we need to start working on the valves. The valves, just 12 volt valves that we had before, right? No big deal. Um, but what's going to be different is the cable length and the way I connect the cables. Before I actually soldered these wires here and I really don't like how that turned out. That's just, that's a failure point waiting to happen. So I actually have the right parts now so I can connect these wires and slide them on uh, to this with appropriate connectors. So I'm excited to get that in place. But then I will have to trim these wires uh, to length and put the butt connectors back on or the plug connectors, excuse me. Uh, here we go. Yeah, here's, no it's not. Well, they all go. They're all falling off somehow. Well, anyway, I think you've seen them before. It's like if you have a phone, you know, you have that little, uh, uh, it's called a wall wart is a, a slang name for it, but it has the little barrel plug on the end. That's what we're going to have here. So, I just need to get to work putting this all in. Let's get going. One twenty. Oh, sorry. One hundred twenty volt bus. We're gonna be relays in here for uh, what do we got? The lights, right? And the motors. We have lots of lights and lots of motors. May not be enough. It's all a matter of how we wire it, though. So I think what I'm gonna do is I haven't fully thought this one all the way through, actually. Um, I did a long while ago, but I think I should have probably got a bigger box here, too. But the initial idea is each bed has a single relay. So on this, this lane, there's going to be, uh, there's five beds, so I need five relays. And then each of those relays would control 120 volt power uh, to each bed section, which would have lights on it uh, for the aquaponics and lights for the microgreens. And if we have motors, we'll have motors too. Um, these relays have quite a few amps on them. I think they're rated up to like 40 amps, so we should be good there. Um, so maybe my original idea will work, but these are still cool little boxes and I can use them around here, even if I'm totally wrong. So now I want to get some... That's my wire here, and we're going to start hooking things up. So what I'm doing right now is I got to take these little nipple things here to go inside of this box uh, and I need to install wire grips which like to keep walking away. There it is, there it is. All right, so we're going to install this into this. So we just got to cut out this little hole here. I am not the world's greatest expert at this. This appears to be a halfway decent way to do it. Always have your Leatherman, your multi-tool. It doesn't have to be a Leatherman, but I like Leathermans. They're nice. And cut that slack off there. Okay, got a little hole. These things just come apart. So there's the hole. Put that up into there. Okay, and then this sits in there like, like so, and we got to go put it into the container. So to install this, 
just got to push it up in there, but we can't have the bolt or the nut, excuse me, the nut on the back side. And bring the wire down here, a little drip loop in it, and we want to bring it back up and go through here. Somewhere right in there appears to be the spot. Okay, so we got uh, the 12 volt connected here. Uh, this is where the AC power is going to be coming in, obviously, uh, to the, got a little loop in here. So if we have any drippage or humidity, it can run down and drip off. And I also left myself some slack just in case something goes wrong. Uh, so now I need to run the AC power line up into here. It shouldn't be too hard. We'll choose the end that's already cut. And then for tonight, I'm actually just going to wire nut. Here, there we go. I'm just going to wire nut these right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this all done tonight uh, and tidy it all up. Next time I see you guys, we'll be working on some cables uh, to connect all this. And all I'm going to be doing is repurposing the cables that I have already. I'm just going to repurpose them uh, for this lane. So hope you enjoyed seeing the end of the automation build here. Like I said, I got to do this uh, tonight, get this all installed. I'm going to have to do it three more times for lanes two, three, and four. Um, but the new code seems to be working really, really well on these. I tested it a lot up at the house. And I just got to put them in and build the cables and automation for aquaponics will be back up and running all server based and all web controlled and I can control it from a smartphone. That's wickedly cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please subscribe. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.